let's get to the Saturday next day. Um, again, around 3 p.m., the concert uh, or the festival would be kicked off by Oyukai Conjugate. Um, now, this is uh, particularly a fitting band to start a day like that because, um, I mean, right now they consist of Andrew Hume and Roger Horbury. So it's basically a duo at this point. And, and they are actually, um, they have done a lot of concerts, I think, last year or the year prior to that. There is also a, quite a wonderful live CD. Um, with this music and the sound, the way they sound right now. It's called uh, Sleepwalker. Uh, you should check this out. This is quite a wonderful uh, sort of an ambient uh, experimental live album. Sounds very good. And um, But obviously it is this kind of a very calm, dark, ambient, fourth world music uh, that uh, is probably ideal at the beginning of a day of a day or of an even of an evening like that despite the fact that they are obviously a well-known and uh, established act and one of the most famous ambient groups around um, but it would be very fitting uh, so next uh, this is the latest album by ML Matloti and uh, she is a singer from Tunisia that has uh, moved uh, to New York a while ago and uh, this is where this album is was recorded. Um, yeah, the, the very interesting and fascinating thing about Emel is that she kind of started as this voice of Tunisia during the Arab Spring and uh, this is kind of how everybody had packed her down but uh, over the course of years, she really kind of worked hard to shake off uh, this kind of typecasting because she didn't want to be typecast like that. And uh, this is beautifully proven, proved uh, with this album, which in parts, I mean, she's an incredible singer and she, she, I mean, you, 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 you certainly find some uh, rather Arabic sounding songs on this album. But a lot of the music is very much influenced by, by, by Celtic uh, harmonies, Celtic melodies and uh, um, very, very different, uh, more like a singer-songwriter material. So uh, she really was not willing to be typecast forever in a particular way as sort of this uh, North African uh, musician or this kind of a world music phenomenon. And uh, this seems to be working very well. This is a wonderful album. And uh, I certainly hope she will continue on this trajectory. Um, yeah, um, I, I saw her live, I think, three years ago. Um, and um, it's kind of funny because she was, she, she was playing live with uh, a small band. Basically one guy playing a darbuka, one guy playing drums and one guy playing keyboards. And uh, I thought the keyboard player looked like Karate Kid, so I was just wondering, damn, Ralph Macchio can play keyboards and he still looks so young, it's incredible. <laughs> but um, ob obviously it was uh, not the Karate Kid, it was Pierre Luigi Salami, and the drummer was Sean Crowder. It took me a while to find that one out, but this is how I kind of get, how I kind of got on the track of all this kind of progressive New York jazz musicians because obviously Sean Crowder is playing in a band with Adam Neely who is quite known on YouTube so this this is how I kind of discovered all that and uh, so here on this record you can uh, Pierre Luigi and Sean Crowder are, are are playing too not I think only on one or two tracks unfortunately, um, but uh, they are still, I think, uh, the official live band of uh, Emil Matluti. And um, who knows, maybe for my fantasy festival, they would drag Adam Neely along to play the bass. And that would be kind of cool. By the way, this album here came out last year um, and it's titled Everywhere We Looked Was Burning. Uh, 
obviously to some extent a reference to the fires in California last year, but probably also a reference to very different things. So, when I cut this video I will cut out all these boring moments when I when I'm putting the records out and in the sleeve. Now the next band that would follow in my fantasy festival is quite an interesting one. God damn it. So I bought this record and this is one of the few moments uh, when I remember who actually had shown this on vinyl community so I took it as advice and bought it. This came from uh, Big Star 1000. So this is the album Trust in the Life Force of the Deep Mystery by The Comet is Coming. Now I bought this uh, particularly because I was looking for something interesting to sink my teeth in. In the last six or ten months I have uh, bought a lot of contemporary albums and they were all kind of kind of precisely reflecting my taste. So those are all kind of albums where I knew I will put them on a turntable, I will like it from the very first second till the end and it all worked exactly like that. Now I knew this is a good record but I also knew that I would probably have a little bit trouble with this record. So uh, this is quite interesting and at the same time a uh, slightly uh, disturbing approach to jazz music. The music is kind of made of two main components. First you have this uh, rather electronic uh, slightly new wave inspired uh, sound, a um, little bit reminiscent of um, kind of like French cold wave and uh, some of the little more harsh electronic uh, pieces from the late 80s, early 90s, kind of like the first Nine Inch Nails album, stuff like that. At the same time in parts very atmospheric and very calm. But the other component is the saxophone playing by Shabaka Hutchings. And uh, this combination is something you probably don't hear every day. So uh, they kind of carved out a very unique, uh, slightly futuristic sound. And um, yeah, the saxophone playing is quite amazing, but it's very different than you probably would expect, or at least I would expect. Um, so this was a very, very new experience for me. A lot of the sax playing takes place in rather lower registers, even sometimes more sounding like, like a bassoon or an oboe. And uh, very interesting, very interesting, uh, very, very clean sound. And oftentimes it's not a, it's not a, I mean, this, this came out on impulse. And so you would kind of expect a, a sort of a bona fide jazzy sound here. But uh, in a sense, it's not. I, I certainly didn't feel like the, the harmonic bass to this music is particularly very jazzy. As I said, it, it has more the feeling of, uh, of new wave and of, of EBM. And uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the chord progressions are always kind of reminiscent of something. In one part, it's basically the same chords as uh, Starship Trooper from, uh, from Yes. <laughs> and uh, a great song. And uh, yeah, so it's a fascinating record that uh, I definitely bought to sink my teeth in and it took me like five to six listens to kind of start to, to start to feel it kind of grow on me. And uh, I think this would be a very interesting live band and uh, certainly a fascinating project um, to take part in my fantasy festival on day two. And who would be next? Oh yeah, this one here. Um, great choice would be Merchan Dede. Merchan Dede is a Turkish artist uh, that has a very distinguished style uh, combining sort of, sort of traditional Turkish themes uh, and melodies with uh, hip-hop and electronic music and dance music and and it's quite a it's quite an exciting uh, project to see live. Um, you can see all kind of live footage by Merchandede. Look it up on YouTube. This is always very interesting. 
he brings always a lot of people on stage and there's always this kind of an encounter of of traditional instruments and very modern electronic instruments and synthesizers synthesizers syn synth syn keyboards and uh yeah so this will be certainly a great uh great uh contribution and uh this is a wonderful album double album called sue and uh this came out on double moon which is this istanbul based label and uh it's a superb record uh kind of like a turkish vangelis probably but uh it's a bit of a weak comparison because uh, in the end the sound is very different and um, in Merchant Dede's music certainly feels a little more unpredictable in parts. And who would be next uh, on this second day? Well, why not the before mentioned Kruangbin? This is her their latest album Mordechai and uh, this is certainly the right band for festivals and uh, people will just love it. It's Kruangbin. So I already listened a couple of times to this record. Um, it's wonderful. I really enjoy it. Um, obviously a band like that is always uh, uh, confronted with a general problem that their popularity and their style is kind of based on a certain on a, on a certain shtick. And uh, it's always, it's the same like uh, the Mauskovich dance band, for example. But the question is, how do you go from there? How can you develop this music? Because uh, you kind of don't want to look back one day and have like 10 albums that sound all exactly the same. Like the first one. And um, I think in the case of Kuangbin, you can kind of feel a certain progression. Um, the music is becoming a little more uh, versatile and... Uh, slightly more funky in places and uh, a little more uh, uh, kind of branching out into, into different styles and so I think this band is here to stay for a while from USA Texas and uh, let's come to the next band and you can very well imagine that uh, I could not uh, perceive the idea of Fantasy Festival without this band taking part. Uh, anything else would be absurd. And of course I'm talking about Altengün. And uh, Altengün is a great band from Amsterdam that's kind of half Dutch musicians and half Turkish musicians. And what they do is they pick up all these uh, in part traditional, in part uh, songs and melodies from the golden era of Anatolian psychedelic rock and they kind of rework them into their own uh, rather funky disco influenced style um, but it's it's a very it's a very beautiful almost slightly eclectic band because um, on the one hand um, you have this rather surf rock type of guitar by Ben Ryder and on the other hand you have all these uh, almost prog rock oriented keyboard parts and uh, this funky bass guitar and um, yeah it's a great it's a great outfit and uh, certainly a wonderful live band as uh, you probably can figure out if you look them up on youtube so there's a lot of altin gun stuff uh, on youtube um, up until now they put out two albums um, i'm already waiting for the third one now, three outfits left on Saturday, so I think it's time for this one. Dead Can Dance. This is where they should appear. And uh, yeah, I've seen Dead Can Dance uh, last year in London in, uh, in the Hammersmith Apollo. And um, it was a great concert. Um, at the same time, you kind of you get you kind of got this strange feeling from the stage that this is a bit of a uh, a goodbye concert or not a goodbye, but certainly a the kind of moment when a famous band transits from being the band that presents their latest achievements to a band that kind of travels to celebrate their own past, 
Well, nothing wrong with that. Almost all of these bands are doing this now. And uh, yeah, certainly one of my favorite bands of all time. So uh, I think uh, Dead Can Dance would be a great choice at this point during the Saturday evening. And uh, they would be followed by this band. Another outfit from the Netherlands. Jungle by Night. Now Jungle by Night is an amazing instrumental group. Um, to call them an Afrobeat outfit is a bit of a simplification because they always manage to incorporate all kind of completely outlandish and modern and classical ideas into their music. This is a nine-piece band. Incredible musicians. Very young. And uh, I mean, kind of like Ikebe Shakedown, they have this uh, brass three-piece in the middle. And um, and as you can imagine, this is a incredible live band. I mean, they really bring energy into the room. This is quite exciting. And um, I, re I can only recommend to look up some of the Jungle by Night gigs on YouTube. It's great fun to watch this. Also, one of their percussionists... Um, is also is at the same time the percussionist of Altin Gun. So this is also part of the fantasy festival game that you have to be practical about it and arrange the bands in an order that uh, seems plausible and practical in terms of um, the musicians playing maybe in multiple projects etc. So those you want to have on the same day maybe. So they don't need to stay overnight just for another gig or something like that. So uh, now this was the second last band on the Saturday, but who would be the headliner on Saturday night? Well that would be something very special. I'm talking about Magma, the insane band from France. Um, this is a wonderful album and a wonderful band and uh, honestly while I know Magma for many years now, I still feel like I have hardly scratched the surface of this monster of a project. And um, so, yeah, this is one of the bands that kind of borders on a, on a life philosophy. <laughs> so if you start, if you go down this rabbit hole and start to kind of explore Magma, then it's something that takes many years and uh, it's a, probably something comparable to being a fan of the Grateful Dead or something. It kind of become, it becomes a lifestyle, much more than just listening to a record. Uh, but um, yeah, Magma Life, this would be quite one of the major highlights of this evening and of this whole festival. It would be cool if, uh, if uh, Janik Top would play bass here. I always loved his bass playing. He's playing also on this record here, which is called Udu Voodoo. And um, he has an incredible bass sound, kind of really vicious, <laughs> really kind of powerful and somewhat cosmic and very heavy. So a fascinating band and really one of its kind. I mean, there is just not a single band that sounds like Magma. This is a universe of its own. And that would be the end of the Saturday.